true believers, this is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 48 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I uh, post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube's search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Okay, before we move on, I want to mention a new indie comic that I'm backing called Magic Cop by Philip Diaz. Mr. Diaz was nice enough to send me a preview of sorts. I'm going to talk more about this after the video, but for now, Magic Cop is, uh, has reached 60% of its goal with um, just over 20 days left. And please back it so that we can get it the rest of the way. Okay, today we have an eagerly awaited announcement from our friend and contributor, Mike, the Bloody Red Baron. 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 Okay, cool it, ladies. Alrighty, Mr. Red Baron has a new book out, and without further ado, here is Mike himself to tell you all about it. All right, here with Mike. Good morning. I always say I don't choose my stories, my stories choose me. After reading my 518th Florida Man story, the message was clear. I was called upon to write the book, the book, Florida Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gary Doob is having a bad day. There's a snake in his toilet, a rabid raccoon in the yard, and his girl Crystal's in jail for getting naked at a Waffle Hut and licking the manager. So Gary sets off with his best friend Floyd to sell his prized Barry Bonds rookie card to raise the $500 needed for bail. But things get out of hand. Florida man is different. It's vile and profane. It incorporates every Florida man trope I've come across in the last five years. Say hello to my little friend. Oh. The cover looks like this. Kinda. The font's a little bit different though. Yeah, the font's different. Uh, Florida Man will be out September 25. That's lightning speed from uh, Wolfpack Press. Uh, I like to think that it will cause people to die from laughing. Uh, and I'm confident that it will, and I've already consulted a lawyer about what I can do about the class action suits, but my friends, uh, if you've ever wondered what Florida Man is about, it's all in this novel. Uh, Gary Duba is in many ways the most admirable character in the book. Uh, he makes many choices that are ill-advised, just like most Florida men. But in the end, he emerges intact with a whole soul. So please take a look at Florida Man when it comes out, September 25th. Thank you. All right, get Bob to come over to you. Bob? Bob. Bob? No, just show Bob. This is Bob. <laughs> and, and you know what? Anybody who leaves a review on, on Florida Man on Amazon will get Bob for a week. We will ship Bob off to you for a week. <laughs> and if you have a squirrel problem, Bob will take care of it. The other night we came home and, and uh, there was meat all over the floor and, and a decapitated squirrel body on the bed. It was horrible. Yes, it was Bob's fourth squirrel this year. All right. Well, when is the book coming out again? September 25th. Okay. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. All righty. Thank you very much. Mike also wanted me to let you know that um, Florida Man will be made into a comic book in the not-too-distant future, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, now on to why I am backing the uh, comic book Magic Cop. Um, Magic Cop seems to be a, a cross between Dungeons & Dragons and Miami Vice. Uh, the plot is easy to summarize, which is good. Um, a magic cop and his wolfman partner investigate mermaids being sold into prostitution. Um, the writer, Philip Diaz, sent me a fairly lengthy description of Magic Cop, and it not only has Ignatius Cromwell, a cop with a magic wand, and his partner, Wolfman, but also a big leprechaun and a flirty witch. Um, they are investigating a case involving a criminal named Bone Datto, 
who is trafficking mermaids from an island into the city of Ambrosia. And he lures the mermaids by promising them fame and then sells them into prostitution after turning their, uh, their fins into legs. And it looks like some of the uh, mermaids just don't work out. <laughs> you know, how can a comic book with mermaid sushi be bad? Um, Diaz also sent me a pilot comic of Magic Cop, and here is some art from that. And, uh, you know, I, I really do like it. Uh, to me, it seems to have a slight touch of art crumb in it, and I think it works. Finally, I should note that in this comic, um, Ignatius, the magic cop, is right out of the academy while Wolfman is a cop on the verge of retiring. So it looks like a pairing that is opposite, uh, that is a rookie and an experienced veteran cop, and Diaz says that he is going to be playing that up in the, in the comic book. And as such, I think you, you have the makings of a very good story here. Okay, I'll provide a link to the Indiegogo campaign for Magic Cop in the, uh, in the description below. Just to let you know again, I'm backing it, and I, uh, I think you should as well. Alrighty, that music means that it is time for Hogg's Headlines, all the news that Doc Hogg wants to report on. Dateline, the DMV takes the fun out of everything. A New Hampshire woman is fighting to keep a vanity plate that she has had on her car for 15 years. And here it is. Wendy Auger of Gonick, New Hampshire, said she received a letter from the Department of Motor Vehicles this month telling her the vanity plate, a reference to her reminder to her kids to pee before we go, is in violation of state requirements. As a parent, I, I have to admit that I, I'd like a license plate like that. Um, quote, I've been a mom for 27 years, and I've been saying this for 27 years, Auger told the, uh, the news station WBTS. Uh, uh, she was ordered to return the plate, but she has filed an appeal. And while we are on the subject, here are some other vanity plates that apparently do not violate DMV standards. Okay, um, I will post a link to that story in the uh, description below. That's all for now, and until next time, have a very nice day.